Good morning, guys. Today we learned about how bills become a law. Um, so the review today is um, the PowerPoint slash old film strip, How Laws Are Made with Goofy. Um, sorry about the beeps, but it doesn't last that long. Fill the notes as you go. Please stop, rewind, fast forward, do what you need to do. Make sure you have all those notes filled in. for several minutes. Golly, this sure is interesting. Yep, I really love watching those senators down there. <laughs> yes, sir, it'd be great to stay here and watch all day long. If only I had some idea what's going on down there. Goofy, I'm sorry, but I can't explain it to you now. You know I'm writing a news story on the Houses of Congress. I have to pay attention. Listen carefully and maybe you'll figure out what's going on down there. Whoa, okay. Goofy listened for a few more minutes. Hmm, they all keep talking about a bill. But what I don't know is... How much is this bill? Just then, someone tapped Goofy's shoulder. They're not talking about that kind of bill. They're talking about a bill which could become a law. You see, Goofy, if there's a need for a new law, a congressman writes a proposal for that law. And that proposed law is called a bill. All at once, Goofy heard someone else whispering in his ear. He's forgetting to tell you the most important thing about a bill. Is that who pays the bill? No, of course not. It's how a bill becomes a law. In order for a bill to become a law, a bill must be passed by both houses of Congress, the House of Representatives, and the Senate. Most bills start in either the House of Representatives or in the Senate. Let's say our bill starts in the House of Representatives. First, a committee in the House of Representatives studies the bill. They hear arguments for and against the bill and make any necessary changes. If the committee supports the bill, the bill goes to the floor of the House of Representatives for debate and discussion. On the floor? I wonder why they don't use chairs. Of course they use chairs. The bill is presented in the House of Representatives so that all the members can discuss the issues of the bill together. If the House passes or approves the bill, it is sent to the Senate. A Senate committee studies the bill passed by the House of Representatives. If necessary, they can change or amend the bill until they feel the bill is a better one. Once the Senate committee approves it, the amended bill is debated on the floor of the Senate. They use the floor, too? Of course they do. After discussing the issues, the Senate votes. If they feel the bill would benefit the country, they vote in favor of it. Then the bill becomes the law. Not yet. Sometimes a bill passed by the Senate is different from the bill passed by the House of Representatives. And sometimes the House of Representatives doesn't approve of the bill passed by the Senate. Gosh. If this happens, a joint conference committee, which is made up of members from both the House and the Senate, tries to change the bill until both houses approve of it. Once both houses vote in favor of it, the bill is sent to the president for his approval. If the president signs the bill, the bill becomes a law. Yay. But not all bills become laws. Shucks. You see, Goofy, a lot of bills never make it past a committee. Other bills don't receive enough votes in the House or the Senate. And still other bills are vetoed. That is, they're not signed by the President. 
I guess that's the end of that bill. Not necessarily. The bill can still become a law if two-thirds of the members of Congress override the president's veto and vote in favor of it. Gosh, now I know a lot about bills. You do, Goofy. But there are other things that can influence or affect what happens to a bill. The president can influence Congress by giving them his opinion. Members of Congress often support bills the president wants to see passed. Also, political parties try to convince members of the House and Senate to vote for bills their party supports. Just then, Martha was interrupted. Don't forget to tell Goofy about the things any citizen can do to influence Congress. Citizens can write to their congressmen. They can campaign for certain representatives and senators who are seeking election. They can work for political parties. And they can join together to form a lobby. Why, there's a lobby in my own hotel. <laughs> Not that kind of lobby, Goofy. A lobby is a group of citizens who join together to work for the same cause. Lobbying is one of the best ways for people to make their wishes known to lawmakers. Let's say individuals who all love animals have formed a group, or lobby. Oh. This lobby uses many different methods, like phone calls, mailings, meetings, and personal contacts to persuade members of Congress to vote for laws that protect animals. And sometimes, many groups of people join together to support laws that can create major changes in our country. Such movements helped women gain the right to vote. Other movements helped pass civil rights laws that affected the course of our nation's history. Suddenly, Martha noticed something happening on the floor below. Say, it looks like they're breaking for lunch down there. Why don't we all go out and eat together? Well, I just have one question before we go.